There are basically two ways how you can use Apache Spark. You can either run an interactive session or you could submit a Spark job in form of a script or JAR file. Also notice that we can choose one of the following three programming languages to interact with Spark. Scala, Python and R. In this video I'm going to show you how to interact with Spark using Python and Scala since the APIs for those two languages are more mature than the prevailing R packages. As of now we only have a small test CSV file on our HDFS. Later we will download a dataset that is a bit larger and then put it into HDFS. Then we are firing up interactive Scala and Python sessions in which we will read in the data. Afterwards we will prepare a Python script and a JAR file which we will then submit as a job to our cluster, which are, uh, which are also just reading in data um, into Spark. First, let me show you how you can create an interactive session with Scala and Python respectively. Also note that we will make use of the queues we defined in the jar configuration files. All right, so first bring up a terminal. Now you should always make sure that your um, Hadoop cluster is actually running. You can run Spark without a Hadoop cluster, but in my case, we want to use one. So as always, just log in as the Hadoop user. All right, then first of all, let's start the Hadoop cluster. So start dfs.sh. And as soon as that is done, we're gonna start yarn by running start-yarn.sh. All right, so start-yarn.sh. All right, everything is running. We have the name node, data node, and the resource manager. Perfect. So um, let's get started with Scala. First move, move into your Spark folder. So we know that our Spark folder is in our home directory and it is called Spark-3.0 and uh, the stuff following that. So CD Spark, all right. And then uh, let's go into our bin folder. Let's show the content of that folder. And here you can see several programs that can be used to interact with Spark. In particular, we now want to use Spark Shell, which will create an interactive Scala session. In that session, it will automatically create a variable called Spark, which will hold all the necessary information to interact with our current Spark session. Of course, we must tell it how to connect to our cluster and what queue should be used. We do that in the following way. So we sell dot spark hyphen shell. Then we say master is yarn. So we want to connect to the yarn uh, resource manager. Q, oh, oops. So Q is diff and name is interactive. Inter interactive. And then hit enter. So a lot happened in that command. Let's digest it. So first we chose to run the Spark shell file, which will create an interactive Scala session. Then we told it that we would like to connect to our cluster by working with yarn. If we wouldn't use yarn, we could give a specific Hadoop root. However, in this case, we only need to give it yarn since we defined where to find the yarn and Hadoop configuration files. Given those files, Spark will figure out how to connect to the Hadoop cluster by itself. I think that is pretty neat. Next, we tell it to use the QDEF and remember that we have to find two queues in our scheduler, prot, and dev. Hence, it will only use resources of the dev queue. And the last option is name, which we set to interactive. This will be the name of our interactive application, which we will later see inside Yarn. All right, so as you can see, an interactive session was started and we could type in Scala commands if we would wish to. However, before we do that, let's have a quick look into the Yarn UI. So bring up Firefox and go to localhost colon 8088, hit enter. Here you can see we currently have one running app. And if you click on it, you will see that there's our application interactive. So that's the name interactive with a bunch of additional information. Now, if you click on running applications, you will see it again, we have one running application. If we would enter Spark Shell, the application would no longer be active. 
But before we go back into our shell, um, remember that we only had one small example data set. This isn't really something to go with, so we will first upload a new data set into HDFS. So we are in Firefox and we can search for a new data set. Now let's Google Titanic data set. So Titanic data set. Hit enter and then well, it's still loading. And then click on a link of the University of Stanford. So there it is, click on it. And here we can find a data set on the survivorship of Titanic passengers. Um, this is hardly big data, by the way, but the ideas I show you scale to arbitrary sizes. So copy the link of that data set over there. So we say copy link location, because that is the CSV file. We have now copied the link of the Titanic data set, which is a CSV file. Now let's go back into our terminal, but not the Spark shell, but a new one. So create a new terminal. Oops, sorry. And I got to log in as the Hadoop user again. All right. And now you can enter wget and paste the link of the data set. All right, it downloaded the data set. And as you can see, it's right over there in our home directory uh, under titanic.csv. All right, next we need to put that into HDFS and you can just upload it to the root directory. So we're gonna use the HDFS file in our Hadoop folder. So Hadoop and then bin HDFS and we're gonna use uh, DFS hyphen put and then the file we want to upload. So in our home directory, it's the Titanic file. And we just want to put that into the root directory and name it Titanic. Titanic.csv. Then hit enter. And the data was uploaded. So it's now on HDFS. I mean, we can check that if you want. So we can say Hadoop bin HDFS, oops, sorry, HDFS. DFS LS and then check the root directory and there it is. So as you can see, we have a Titanic file over there. All right, so fantastic. Now go back into the terminal containing the Spark shell. Here I want to read the uh, CSV file from HDFS and this is actually pretty simple. So again, this is our um, interactive um, shell terminal. So where we have this interactive Scala session. And what we want to do is we want to read that CSV file into uh, on HDFS, that CSV file that resides on HDFS into a data frame. So let's say val df equals spark dot read dot format. And now we got to give it the format. It's a CSV file. We want to use a header. So we say option header true. We want to say that it's separated. So the separator is a comma. And we say load it. And the way we access the HDFS is actually pretty simple. We just say HDFS colon. Let me expand that so you can see everything. So it's HDFS colon forward slash, forward slash, forward slash. So we are now in our root directory. And then we say titanic.csv. Hit enter. And now it's loading into the data frame. Okay, so this command will read the CSV file and save it as a Spark data frame under DF. As you may know, Spark is lazy and only evaluates the commands when it really has to. So let's um, show the first 10 rows of our data frame to see if it has really worked. So we say df.show. We want 10 rows and faults. There it is. Um, the show method on a Spark data frame takes two arguments. The number of rows to return and whether or not it should trim the columns. Um, so it looks like the data was read in correctly. That worked great. Let's get out of the shell by entering Control D. All right, we are now out of the shell and we are back in the bin folder of our Spark folder. 
So the interactive shell has been terminated and there will be no running application in Yarn. So let's do the same for PySpark. So we say PySpark and then master is Yarn, Q is dev and name is inter interactive. Then hit enter. There it goes. As you can see, it's the same syntax. We only replaced spark hyphen shell with PySpark. We are greeted with a command line interface ready to take commands. Again, we want to read in the CSV file and print the first 10 rows to the screen. So let me clear the screen. So we say df equals spark.read.format CSV. So that's basically the same. And we say option header still the same however note that true in scholar is written in um, small letters and um, here we gotta say true with a um, capital T all right then we say option separator is also true and then we say load and give the exact same fi uh, file path hdfs forward slash forward slash forward slash titanic dot csv hit enter all right it's loading then df dot show 10 false so the syntax of scala and python is nearly identical in that case and it worked um, we now know how to start an interactive session with scala and python and how to load data into them next we would like to submit files as spark jobs to our cluster that means that we have to put our instructions into a file, which we will then submit to Spark. Um, it will be executed just as if we would have entered the code into the interactive shell. Um, of course, for this, we first need to create those files. For Python, it is actually pretty easy. Just create a .py file and submit it. So let's do the same we've done before, but in a .py file. So first of all, let's exit the interactive shell. All right. And let's create that file in our home directory by using nano. So we say nano and we say script.py. So the first thing we need to do is import Spark session from pyspark.sql. This is necessary to um, create a Spark session which is used to interact with our cluster. So we say from pyspark.sql import Spark session. Next, we want to actually create the Spark session. So we say Spark is equal to Spark session dot builder dot app name. And let's call that submitted. And then we say dot get or create. All right. So we've created the Spark session. So it's Spark equals Spark session dot builder dot app name dot uh, get or create. Um, note that we don't enter the master here since we will provide all that as command line arguments when we actually submit the job to our Spark cluster. The name suffices here. Um, next, just enter the commands we issued at the command line. So we say df equals spark.read.format and that is a CSV file. Option header true and option separator, separator is a comma and load hdfs forward slash forward slash, forward slash titanic dot csv. All right, let, let me just check that spark dot read dot format csv option header is true, option separator is comma and load hdfs titanic dot csv. All right, finally we say df dot show 10 faults. So this will print the first 10 rows of the Titanic dataset to our screen. All right, so save and exit the file. So control X, yes, we want to save that, enter. Um, since we are still inside the bin folder, we can use the spark submit script to submit our py file. So we're gonna use spark hyphen submit. And then we say master is yarn. The Q is, oops, Q is def, 
and we want to submit the script.py file in our home directory. Hit enter and the job is submitted. Now we will receive some debugging info and ultimately we should receive the first 10 rows of our data frame. So let's just wait. All right, there you can see them, the first 10 rows of our Titanic data frame. All right, let's clear the screen. Now doing the same with Scala is a bit more involved since we need to install Scala and package our application into a jar file. Okay, first let's install Scala and SBT, the tool we are going to use to build our jar file. We're going to copy and paste some commands since SBT is not included in the regular Debian package manager. So first of all, let me make that a bit smaller. All right, clear the screen and open Firefox. And we're gonna Google Debian install SBT and then open the entry by Tech Republic. That one is pretty good. And now we're just gonna copy and paste some commands. So down there, it should say something about installing SBT. There it is, install SBT. All right, so let's get put that over there. Whoops, sorry. Oh. All right, so. First of all, we're gonna just copy that command, paste it. And once our, ah, of course. Um, Hadoop is not able to issue the sudo command. Only my account is able to do that. So we're just gonna open up another terminal. Let's hide that for a few seconds. So I'm now logged in as the, um, as my, with my personal user account. And then we're just gonna Paste that command, hit enter, enter our password. All right. Then we are issuing that command. All right, done. Then this right over there. That is done. And finally, we are just going to install SPT. So sudo apt install SPT. Yes, we do want to install that. Let me just wait a few seconds. Then we say sudo opt install, so that worked. And then we're gonna say sudo opt install Scala. So that's a bit easier. Okay, so let's test Scala for a write. So, okay, I just typed in Scala. It's bringing up the interactive shell. Let's say print line, hello world. Yep, that works. So control D, escape that. All right, so we've installed it. Let's bring up our Hadoop terminal again. All right, let's start creating an application. So first let's create a folder. Let's call it hello underscore world. And let's create the following folder in there. So mkdir hyphen p. And we're gonna create the following folder. So hello world. Then src main Scala, hit enter. And next we need to create a build.spt file inside that parent folder. So first of all, let's go into that folder and let's say nano build.spt. And here we describe our project and list all of our dependencies. So the name of that will be hello world. When we say version is, yeah, let's say 1.0. And then very important Scala version we're gonna use is 2. Point, oops, sorry, 2.12.10. Now I know the Scala version we created is a bit older, but we need to set it to this version for it to work because uh, newer versions of Spark will only work with Scala uh, 2.12, so we say Scala version, we're gonna use is 2.12, and we need exactly library dpn, let me, let me check that I spell it correctly, so library dependencies, so library dependencies, yes. And we're gonna add 
org.apache.spark percent percent spark hyphen sql percent 3.0.1 then exit oh, save and exit so as you can see i call my application hello world and we tell it that we are using scala version 2.12 now let's create the actual script. So create that inside this source main Scala folder. So we're gonna say nano source main Scala and let's call that hello world.scala. All right, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna import um, the Spark session. So import org.apache.spark.sql.spark session then we're going to define an object representing our application and let's call that hello world and inside that object we're going to define a main method And inside that main method, we're gonna define our actual logic. So we say, let's create a Spark session called Spark, and that will be Spark session dot builder dot app name, and that will be submitted. And let's create that. So create. Then we're gonna read in the data frame. So df equals spark.read.format CSV. So as usual, header is true. So separator is a comma. And we're gonna load that from HDFS. So as you can see, it's the same code, titanic.csv. And then we're just gonna print that data frame, first 10 rows, all right. And then we're gonna stop the Spark session. So just let me check that. So first of all, we import Spark session from org Apache Spark SQL, then create a hello world object representing our application. That application has a main method and inside that main method, we insert the actual logic. So we say Spark is Spark session builder app name get or create. So create our Spark session. Then we load the data frame. So Spark read format CSV option header is true. Separator is a comma. And then we load it from HDFS. Then we show the data frame, the first 10 rows. And then we are um, stopping the Spark session. All right, so save that and exit, perfect. Now we no need to package that application into a job file and that is the job of SPT. So make sure you are inside your applications folder and also make sure that it follows the structure I have laid out before. So again, there should be a build.spt file and then a folder src uh, main scholar and then whatever the name of your application is. Next, enter an um, SPD package. So enter that. And this will print some information to the screen. But most importantly, you should find a target folder where there is a jar file in it. And that will be the jar file we will submit to our Spark cluster. Now wait for it to finish. All right. Now ls, there's the target cluster. So let's have a look at the target cluster. And inside that target cluster, you see a folder for Scala 2.12. So let's go in there and there is our job file. So hello world um, 2.1201.jar. That is the job file we wanna submit to our cluster. So let's go back into our Spark folder. More specifically, let's go back into the bin folder of our Spark folder. And inside there, we're gonna say spark hyphen submit. And we say the class we want to execute is hello world. Remember, that's the name of the uh, the class that has the main uh, method. And then we're gonna say masters yarn. 
We're gonna use the dev queue. And now we gotta give it the path to our job file. So that would be home directory. Then that would be hello world, target, and then Scala 12. And the name was hello world something dot jar. So Spark submit, we tell it, okay, use this class. Then we say master is yarn. The queue we're gonna use is def and you can find the jar file right over there. So hit enter. Again, it will load. And there it is. There is our Titanic data frame up there. So the main method was um, called and there we see the first 10 rows of our Titanic data frame. All right, we covered actually quite a bit. I've shown you how to interact with the two most common programming languages in Spark and the two prevalent ways of interacting with Spark. This should get you started for all sorts of tasks you may want to do on your Spark cluster.